It's really elegant and iconic. It's just amazing to see one in the wild. Good morning everybody, I'm in Florida with my friend Patrick and we're looking for a bird that's pretty iconic and something that I'd be really excited if we saw. And it is a pink bird with long legs and a long neck, uh, the American Flamingo. And so it's been at St. Mark's National Wildlife Refuge, so it's been at a couple different places we're going to see uh, if we can find it there. Today, we're looking for a famous bird with an amazing story. In the fall of 2018, Category 5 Hurricane Michael struck the Florida Panhandle, bringing destruction, but also a unique visitor, an American flamingo that the locals named Pinky. Pinky was discovered on Halloween in 2018 at St. Mark's National Wildlife Refuge, presumably picked up from the Yucatan Peninsula and dropped at St. Mark's from the hurricane winds. Without any tags or bands, Pinky is presumed to be a wild bird and not an escapee from captivity. The supervisory ranger for St. Mark's stated that visitors to the refuge right after the hurricane who'd witnessed the devastation across the panhandle called Pinky a bright spot, literally, during a dark time. Based on online reports, it seems as though Pinky has remained in a similar area ever since, possibly disappearing for a short times, but always returning to St. Mark's. Driving about five hours from Louisiana the night before, Patrick and I stayed in Defuniac Springs, driving the final two hours the next morning. On the way to St. Mark's, we decided to stop at the state capitol in Tallahassee, as Patrick keeps a list of all the state capitals he's been to. Capital okay. life list? Yeah. Pretty good. It's, it's nice because they don't move. Yeah. Pretty uh, reliable to spot them. <laughs> The Florida State Capitol is unique in that the new Capitol building, built in 1975, stands next to the old Capitol building. The shorter, old Capitol, built in 1845, was going to be demolished until the movement began to save and restore it. The old Capitol was restored to its 1902 appearance in 1982. Alright, we decided to make a quick stop at the Capitol. And there's actually the two buildings here, one for the old Capitol and then one for the new one, and it sounds like they kind of turned the old one into a museum. Uh, really chill in the city. I really like this city. Um, and uh, Capitol building is really, really cool too. Looks very uh, well suited for Florida. We left the Capitol and arrived at St. Mark's National Wildlife Refuge, checking one of the spots that Pinky was normally seen on the way in without any luck. All right, well, here's the deal. Um, we checked the spot where it was seen yesterday and it wasn't there, so now we're walking out to Mounds Pool number three, but someone was there this morning and didn't have it, or they weren't looking for it. It wasn't on their checklist. So um, we're walking out there, and hopefully it'll be around. Ooh, look at that vulture sunning. The turkey vulture is an often misunderstood scavenger that plays an important role in the ecosystem. With their featherless pink head, brown and black plumage, and white trailing edge on the underside of their wings, these birds are often seen gliding overhead or feeding on carrion. When in flight, they are often seen in open areas soaring with a slight V-shape to their wings, teetering in the sky. Turkey vultures seem to have incredible immune systems, and scientists think their featherless head assists with cleanliness when feeding on animal carcasses. They live in many southern states year-round, and their range extends into Central and South America. They migrate into northern areas in the summer. Turkey vultures may nest in the abandoned nests of other birds in rocks, caves, or thickets, producing one brood of about one to three eggs per nest. No flamingo yet, but we had a really cool experience with a turkey vulture eating a dead snake. And it was really cool to just see it, um, you know, take care of this dead organism. Turkey vultures often get a bad rap and people just call them ugly and like just kind of associate them with dead stuff, but they play a really important role of, you know, eating things that died and keeping the uh, ecosystem in good order. So underappreciated bird there. Um, we ran into other people who were looking for the flamingo too, so hopefully if it's here, one of us will find it. As we traveled further, it became obvious that the refuge was full of life.
While enjoying the diversity of the area, we stopped to talk to some other birders who gave us some exciting news. All right, we got the flamingo, and so we actually stopped to talk to two people about uh, some other birds, and then another group of people came by, and we were like, oh, did you see the flamingo? And they were like, yeah, it's right over there. They're like, you can actually see it from here. And so we looked out, and it was right there, and it was perfect. Uh, it looks like it flew over close to the pass, so we're going to try to walk all the way around and get a better view, but we got it. So we, you know, accomplished what we came here to do. That's a, a new life bird for me. I think Patrick's already seen him, but mm -hmm. that was cool. We did so it's it. It's a country bird. Country bird. Country bird. So we're here and the flamingos all the way over there. We continued walking under the Florida sunshine, noting other species along the way. We're lying there. Look where my camera is. Walking the weed line. Oh, there it is. Looks like a clapper. I think King would be bigger. Yeah, I have more barring. Cool, yeah. Eventually we stopped on the path at the point closest to Pinky and were able to watch this graceful and elegant bird feed. Alright, well we currently have the American Flamingo right behind me. And it's just such a distinctive creature. And uh, it's really elegant and iconic. It's just amazing to see one in the wild. The American or Caribbean flamingo is one of the largest flamingo species with an average adult height of five feet. Adults are pink in coloration and have long legs, a long neck, a downturned bill, and a slim body. Adult flamingos get their pink coloration from carotenoids in the algae and shrimp they eat after it's metabolized by their body. American flamingos are normally found in the Caribbean islands and the northern coast of South America, sometimes straying into the United States. Flamingos feed on algae, seeds, and aquatic invertebrates by pumping water in and out of their bill, which has comb-like plates used to capture food. There is no usual breeding season for American flamingos because breeding is dependent on rainfall to provide enough food to support chicks. Pairs of American flamingos are monogamous, and the adults build a mound-shaped nest with a single egg that takes around 28 days to hatch. That's great. Wow. While watching Pinky, we also spotted an elusive, small species near the water's edge. The least bittern is the smallest heron in the world, measuring between 11 and 14 inches at adulthood. Adult males have a dark colored crown and back with a mix of various other colors on their body, including chestnut, beige, and white. Females look similar except with a lighter crown and back. When alarmed, least bitterns often turn their bill upwards and sway in an attempt to blend in with the marsh vegetation. The range of the least bittern encompasses much of eastern North America during their breeding season, and they are permanent and wintering residents in parts of Central America. They feed mainly on small fish, but will also eat other small animals. They are often seen hunting near the water's edge in marshes, and have one to two broods per year of around two to six eggs each. We also heard an unmistakable call from a bird that had previously eluded Patrick and can be highly secretive. After a few minutes, it perched up in the tall grasses and That's we were able to get up. some nice looks. There it is. Wow. Was that him, that call? Yeah, that was him. Just flew. Dude, how does that feel? Pretty awesome. <laughs> That's been, how, <laughs> how long has that been your nemesis bird for, the Nelson Sparrow? Oh gosh, at least like four years. <laughs> Dude. I've tried for this bird like 10 times <laughs> in Wisconsin and Louisiana. Unbelievable. <laughs> you just needed some I need my pink flamingo bird. magic, yeah. yeah. 
All right, well, overall, that was fantastic. I mean, we got great looks at the Flamingo. We also had that Lee Spittern and then the Nelson Sparrow show up, so a lot of uh, great species kind of at one time. And we just completed the walk back round trip. It was nearly three miles. And uh, the bugs got really bad, so I'm excited to just chill in the car for a little bit. Um, but it was, a, it was a great day out here on the trail. Couldn't have asked for much more. With our goals for the day accomplished, plus a few bonuses, we decided to visit a popular tourist attraction, the St. Mark's Lighthouse, spotting some other interesting creatures along the way. On the lighthouse here, we have a bunch of these bugs. Get my tripod out of the way here. A bunch of these bugs down here. And they're called love bugs because when they mate, they fly around together for a while. So you'll see them paired up, moving all over the place. The St. Mark's Lighthouse is the second oldest lighthouse in Florida and the oldest lighthouse located on the Gulf Coast. The tower that currently sits at St. Mark's was completed in 1842. Made it to the lighthouse. Pretty sweet. After enjoying the lighthouse, we concluded our birding adventure at St. Mark's. St. Mark's National Wildlife Refuge is an incredible place. Even though it was a specific bird that brought us there originally, the abundance of wildlife and beautiful habitat makes it a must-see destination for any wildlife lover. If you do happen to visit, make sure to say hi to Pinky for us. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Let's keep her moving. Shout out to Charlie Barons. So we Actually walk in far. around here. How far would you say it is? Maybe a, a mile? How fast is your mile time? We can just run there. Uh, I think it'll be 20 minutes. <laughs> no? You don't have a five minute mile? Yeah, I have a new pot.